Hi, this is Ted Bollinger with TV Specialists, or TVS Pro, as it's called now. TVS Pro is um, a division of TV Specialists. And in this comparison, we're going to be looking at the new U8, the Optima UHZ65, which is on the left in this case. And on the right is the Sony, the uh, VPL VW365ES which has been kind of a mid-level reference projector in many home theaters. So what we're looking at here is color, but you'll notice on the right side we're getting some flicker. That's because this test signal is actually coming out at 24p, but we don't want you to pay attention to the flicker. We want you to look more noticeably at the actual colors. And um, we're going to take a reading here in just a minute so you can actually compare the intensity. So while we're on this fixed pattern, we're going to take a look at the intensity of these two projectors. The Sony is a lamp base, but as we know from previous comparisons, Sony does their calibration at the rated output. But looking here on the white section of the color bars, we're reading 86.5, uh, 87. And then we're going to walk over there and measure the same thing, but now we're on the Optima laser to see where it's actually coming in. And we're actually coming in at 97.8, 97.6. So uh, as advertised, the, the Optima is putting out a brighter signal. So here we're looking at color and specifically skin tones. Um, on the video, as well as with our eyes, you should be able to notice what we're seeing, which is the reds are different, the blues are slightly different, and when you see some yellows, you'll see different. We're going to roll this so you can look at it. Now they're both great pictures. They're both very bright home theater projectors. The Sony in its bright mode and the Optima uh, in its 100%. You can adjust the laser from 100% to 50% and it really depends on the scene in terms of which one really looks brighter. But in terms of measurement, the Optima is a little bit brighter. But again, because of sequential color that a DLP uses, the Sony color is a little bit different. Um, they're both very good. It just really depends on what you're looking for. So here we're looking at several colors in terms of skin tone, and we've always felt skin tone is one of the best ways to evaluate. We're going to roll this in just a minute, but um, hopefully you can see there are some very minute differences between the reds, the blues. The yellows on this laser are definitely a deeper, richer yellow than what we were able to get out of the UHD 65, so it's much, much closer to the Sony. We're going to roll this and you can take a look at both the floor, the skin tone, the blocks, um, kind of compare those and see, but they're both really amazing picture with great color. Um, intensity wise, they're very close. Actual measurement, the white parts of the picture are brighter on the Optima and on the Sony, the color parts are a little bit brighter. So um, it's, it's a very interesting comparison. Okay, in this scene, we're again comparing mainly color. I'm going to roll this forward so you can see, but of course contrast, detail, all of those things play into effect. But we're looking at color. Uh, we're going to have some scenes here with extremes. There's very different skies here, even though they've been color calibrated. They've been set up with 6500. Um, and again, the cameras don't capture exactly what our eyes see. Um, but again, uh, here you'll see some differences in the blues. We're going to be going to some aqua scenes here in a minute and you'll be able to see some of the differences there. Uh, the greens are slightly different. The yellows are m very, very close. Uh, you can see the gold in the dome there, the orange on the roof, the yellow pastel stucco or brick. Here you see the colors in the uh, uh, umbrellas and the bluish green in the surf. Um, they're both really spectacular colors. Uh, Sony is famous for their triluminous color and of course using a laser we're able to improve the color dramatically over a traditional lamp and this is different technology because this is DLP but it is coming extremely close to triluminous color. They are slightly different and it's just going to be personal preference which one you like best but they're both very very good. Okay now we're going to take a look at contrast and this was a very interesting scene so I wanted to use it again so this is a great example of the advantages and disadvantages of some of the light control techniques. The Sony projector, in this case, the 365ES, does not use 
an iris, but an iris could have a similar effect, and it makes the black darker. In this case, Sony is using uh, dynamic lamp, uh, lamp control, which when that clamps down, the blacks on the right are a deeper black, although it's hard to see because of all the other bright objects. You'll see that in another scene. But what you are seeing in this video, and I'll roll this, and our eyes are also seen, uh, there are as many stars. This is not like the E-shift where we're missing the stars. The stars are there, but the stars on the Optima are much more intense. And that has to do with the native, what we call ANSI contrast or native contrast of the projector. Um, here we're looking at two uh, interesting uh, detailed of, uh, I think it's a cathedral, and now we've moved on to this scene. Now, um, when we get to the detail scene, we're going to look at some of these a little bit different, but right now we're going to move on to some of the contrast. Okay, in this scene, we're going to be comparing some more contrast. This is a very high contrast scene. We've got a black sky. We've got the lanterns going up. This is where the Sony contrast and the SXRD panels have a slight advantage. Um, they're, they're both very good scenes, but um, are very good images side by side, but the Sony does have the edge here in terms of black. But you'll notice here in just a minute, when we go to this scene, which actually has a lot of, I'm going to freeze this for a second, this has some very dark elements, but it's also got quite a few uh, lighter elements. So the control of the light, in the case of the Sony, is now having to open up a little bit because it sees more of that light. So the lamp control, in this case, is giving it more light. Now our blacks are very, very comparable. Hopefully you'll be able to see this, but to the eye, this is very, very comparable. So it's only on the darkest scenes with a mostly black image will you be able to see that difference. Okay, in this scene we're going to be looking at detail. You can see the small people moving. I'm going to freeze that, and we're going to zoom in to those clock faces because there is a lot of controversy um, being discussed as to whether the DLP chip can really reproduce all 8.3 million pixels. And I think if you look very closely at those clock faces, on the right side you have the Sony native 4K chips. You have three of them. Uh, we've checked convergence. It's aligned very closely. And on the left you have the single chip DLP. And if you look at that clock face, um, we've done this even in comparison to an OLED. And I think you're going to have a hard time saying that the DLP does not have as much detail as any 4K UHD uh, image. It's very detailed, very sharp. I'm going to roll this so we can talk a little bit more about some of the things that you're seeing. But um, now you'll be able to compare colors a little bit. You notice that the, uh, the yellows, the oranges, the sky, the sky is very different. Um, they're a different type of blue. They're both very good. Um, here's some nice bright colors. They've both got very good reds. The uh, laser definitely is up the red uh, um, spectrum in the uh, Optima. And this church has tons of detail. The yellow on the carriage wheels, the, the horse, um, lots of good detail here. I'm, I'm going to freeze this and, and we're going to talk just a little bit about what you're seeing here. Um, there is some differences in the color. Uh, we did calibrate these to 6500, but when you see the color, the way they're reproducing them, they are a little bit different. They're both very pleasing um, and both extremely detailed. Uh, it's very interesting to understand that the Sony, which was originally at 10,000, is now down to 7995. And at Cedia last week, they introduced a, uh, a new projector that's coming out that'll basically be very similar to this projector that'll be in that $5,000 range. And one of the reasons, I think, is what you're seeing on the left is both the UHD65 and, in this case, the UHZ65, whether you use a lamp or whether you use a laser, uh, as far as detail, sharpness, resolution, whether it's on 1080p or whether it's on 4K like we're looking at now, does a very good job. So there you have basic comparisons of color, contrast, and detail. Um, it's really interesting that Sony has now introduced the replacement of this projector, which will be the 285ES. They just did that at uh, Cedia last week, and we expect it to be pretty much the equal to this projector. Um, which will make it very interesting because that projector will be at 5,000. The uh, Optima is at 4,495, 
and it'll just kind of depend on your application, which one you want. Uh, the Optima can put out a little more brightness, but the Sony is way underrated in terms of its lumens into what it puts out if you're talking anything near realistic color. So hopefully that gives you a good comparison. Uh, Detail-wise, um, I think that's the key takeaway in terms of this new DLP chip, whether it's in the UHD 65, the, the UHD 60, or this new one, the UHD uh, or UHZ 65, it, it is not second class to any other chip currently on the market in terms to a 4K UHD display. It is absolutely very, very detailed, very, very sharp, whether you're on 1080p or whether you're looking at 4K. Let's take a look at the Theo chart for the UHZ65 Optima laser projector. But before we do, we need to explain just a, bit, a little bit about what a Theo chart is. So a Theo chart is a visual way of being able to see both the image quality. So here we'll highlight on, in yellow on the right side, all of those things are what determine the image quality and the perceived uh, quality and performance of a projector. On the left side, the part we've highlighted in green is the practicality or suitability of a projector for a given uh, application. For example, you may need something that's uh, on for uh, long periods of time and you don't want to worry about replacing lamps. So then the illumination, uh, 20,000 hours to half-life, becomes very important. On the other hand, uh, the price may be the determining factor or maybe it's because you need 3D. So that's why we've put the on the green side the suitability and on the yellow side. Now we're not going to highlight the yellow and green in the future but that's just so you can understand. So let's take a look now at both the UHZ65 on the left and the Sony uh, 365ES on the right. So immediately looking at these, you can see performance-wise, the Sony has an edge in several of those areas. And uh, in this review, as well as in others, you will find that the Optima, even though it doesn't have as good a blacks as some of the very best projectors, the contrast is actually very good on a scene unless it is pure or near black and then it's not quite as good as the best projector but when you've got a combination of blacks and highlights and a typical movie scene it, it is actually quite extraordinary and that's what's creating quite a buzz about the uh, the Optima projector. So the, the UHS-Z takes that one step further because they're now able to modulate the light with the laser um, and then on the left side, though, they haven't added the 3D capability and the latency if you're a gamer has not been reduced on the uh, laser version of the projector. So hopefully this gives you a very visual way. And, and um, if you want to understand how these evaluations take place, we'll have an evaluation key on our website at tvspecialist.com that will go into detail about these various performance uh, levels that we measure uh, and then we'll also have these various Theo charts for different projectors that we test so you can compare them. For example, you may want to compare either the Sony or the UHZ65 to the UHD60 or the UHZ65 or maybe to one of the Optimus. So we'll have those charts at our website shortly and you'll be able to visit there as we post new projectors that we test but the UHZ65 is coming out in October of 2017 and it looks like to be an amazing projector. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website at tvspecialist.com.